My parents always took me out into, into nature. We went hiking, we went walking, even, even when I was very young. But um, when I was 13, I got the opportunity to go out bird watching with a, with a fellow student in my class. And I saw a goldfinch, I saw a great crested grebe um, through the binoculars for the first time. And it was, oh, wow, isn't, you know, isn't nature fantastic? Aren't birds exciting? And I have been an exciting, passionate bird watcher ever since. There is nothing in my job description at Duke University that says that when I teach, that I shouldn't teach students that I shouldn't teach the media, I shouldn't teach politicians, I shouldn't teach in my church. I'm simply a teacher who believes that the, the audience of my students should include essentially everyone. And if that means, you know, going from my, from my field clothes and putting on a suit and going into, into Congress to talk to policymakers there, or indeed any other country's policymakers, I don't see that as a, as a problem. I think there's a problem on the part of the scientific community who say, we simply don't do enough. Much of what we do as scientists is to argue with each other. And, you know, the famous politician who says, I want a one-handed scientist. Scientists usually say, oh, on one hand it could be this, or on the other hand it could be that. And the politician wants a straightforward message. Well, the messages are not always straightforward, and we should always be very careful to uh, define the limits of what we know. But nonetheless, we know an awful lot of science, and we know enough science to know that global heating is a problem, that the loss of forests is a problem worldwide, loss of species is a problem worldwide, and you know we have the scientific answers to fix those problems. More science is good, but it's a matter of will, it's a matter of grasping the nettle and getting on with the job of, of giving our children uh, the environment that we have and not one that's completely depauperate. My message to youth is, you know, you, you can, you must become more involved in, in the issues of your environment and all the we were talking earlier about, about ecological restoration. There's a flock of, uh, of grey lag geese um, just flying, flying overhead. That's a marvellous, that's a marvellous spectacle. And you know, um, when I was growing up in, in, in Britain, um, in my teens, you know, these, these geese were rare because we destroyed most of the wetlands in, in, in lowland Britain and, um, and, and across much of Western Europe for that matter. And now because of very active, aggressive um, restoration and the concern of the various people who are walking on these polders with their binoculars this morning, you know, we have we restored nature to, to areas even as close to the city as Amsterdam as we are, as we are now. This is a measure of how successful we can be in conservation if we put our, if we put our minds to it. And what kind of people are we if we destroy our world and leave it in tatters to the generations of people to come? Caring about the environment is profoundly an ethical, spiritual, religious issue. We are always there at the request of local communities, sometimes very poor ones. And the reward for us is, is their thanks, their smiles, their appreciation for what we can do to, to try to give them a better life, and at the same time protecting the very special places where they live.